Hello everyone, Unforgiven here, coming to you with another GIMP tutorial. And today we'll be going over how to take text and make it appear as if it has been chiseled or uh, sunk into the back any background image. And to do so, um, what I've done, I went on the internet and I found a nice picture, open up GIMP here, and a nice picture of some wood. And I'm using this for an example because it has a lot of grain and a lot of detail. So uh, if you were sitting here and carving on this with a knife, uh, that's the kind of effect we're going for in the end. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. If you do not already have the program, uh, GIMP is a free open source program. can be downloaded from GIMP.org. Uh, once you have it, just simply download, install, and open it up and you will open up the image that you wish to alter. Okay, now once you have your image open, we are going to go over to the toolbox and select our text tool. Coming back over to our image, we're going to draw a nice large box. Uh, size is not really, it is not really important. Um, the more text you're going to put into the box, the larger you're going to want the, want the box. That way, it just saves some having to having to come back and resize uh, when you go to typing everything out. Uh, next, I am going to come over to my toolbox, and I have docked my tool options below onto my toolbox. Um, if you don't have this, uh, and if you're not sure exactly where this came from, you can go up top here and scroll across to Windows and Dockable Dialogs and the top option is your tool block or your tool options. Clicking that it will open up your tool options and more than likely it will open up in a Dockable Dialog window like our layers and brushes. All of these can be moved around and combined um, simply by clicking on the tab itself and holding down the left mouse button and dragging over to where you want it to be and just drop it. Uh, I would do so and just show you an example but I've done it a couple times now and for some reason when I'm recording it will not allow me to redock my uh, my taps. So anyway, once you have your tool options uh, in view or you have it open, it, uh, it gives you all your options for all your text, uh, for the text box you just created here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a font and I'm going to change that uh, more than likely, for default, you are on Sans, and it's more than likely what I am going to choose. Actually, I'm going to choose Sans Bold, uh, just to be a little bold. For size, I am going to choose 500, uh, so I make it rather large. And I'm going to type, let's see... Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, uh, also, you want to make sure your background color here is white. Um, if it's not set to white, which it should be by default, uh, you just simply click. It will open up your color palette, and you just simply select white and click OK. Uh, of course, if you had already typed it out, you can highlight, choose your color, click OK, and it would change all the color to what you selected. Uh, but like I said, we want white. So I'm just going to grab that and change it back. Okay. Now, that is the text that I want in there, and it roughly looks about the right size. Okay. Alright. So the next thing I am going to do, actually, let's see, I want to spread out my letters a little bit. I'm just going to give you a little example of what else is in the uh, tool options here. Um, down below where you chose your size and font, uh, you have your color, which you could have chose here, which, like I said, needed to be white. Uh, your justification, uh, which on my screen is a little hard to see, but you have your course here, your left, right, center. Uh, and as you scroll over each one of these, it'll actually tell you what they are. Indentation of the first line, so that will indent the first line as you start as you type. Uh, like the indention of a paragraph. Uh, your line spacing, so the spacing in between each line. If I had Unforgiven written or just multiple, you know, text written out, and it came down uh, to more than one line, 
this would change the spacing in between each line and the last and this is one that I like to play with is the adjustment between the letters the adjust letter spacing so just by clicking up here you'll notice my letters start to expand and grow apart from each other now now doing so I my end drop down here so to fix that I'm just going to come over here to the side uh, making sure of course I I don't want one tool option I had to be to do all that okay I'm going to come over to the side and drag out just a little bit and drop and unclick excuse me and uh, my end move back up uh, if it doesn't work right off the bat I just move a little bit at a time until my, my the rest of my text pops back up to where I want it to be okay now once you have that looking like you want it to and that's good enough for me right now for this tutorial uh, we're going to come over to our toolbox and choose our move tool and making sure our text layer is highlighted we're going to move that around and get it to where we want it on our background Okay. now once you have it placed where you want it uh, before we can do anything else we need to change this from a, a text layer into an image layer and if you'll notice also there is this dotted yellow line going around here this is marking the boundary for our text layer or currently and this needs to be equal to the background or the canvas uh, image so we're going to right click on our text layer and choose layer to image size and this does two things for us it not only changes the layer that our text or our text was on to fit the background or the canvas but it also converts it into an image layer so you want to make sure all editing you would like to do on your text is done before you change it uh, convert it into a layer uh, because once you've done this step you cannot go back well you can go back by undoing but uh, you cannot uh, alter from here okay uh, now once we have our text here and we have resized it to the layer uh, let's resize the layer to the image excuse me we are going to want to make the text look as if it is part of the wood so to do so we're going to come up top to filters and down to map and we are going to displace now displacing is taking an object uh, which or whatever you're going to displace and rendering it using uh, another a, a sample on how it should look and uh, I make, that'll make more sense here in just a moment so what we're going to do is we are going we're not going to mess with our X uh, displacement or our Y displacement values but we are going to over right over here we're going to click here the drop down and we're going to change the sampling what we, what we want to take the sample from to our background layer uh, and since that's the only thing there it should be your only other option and we're going to do that for the X and the Y and that's telling the displace here to take the text and uh, take a sample from the background uh, to do the effect we're not going to mess with displacement mode or the edge behavior leave those alone and just simply click OK give that just a moment to run and this is your finished effect here for this place it just kind of makes it look a little fuzzy but uh, what it's actually done, like I said, is it's sampled to the back. Uh, you can really tell where this crack here is going in the wood, how it's pulled out here. It's made the texture uh, of the uh, well of the text itself match the background. So from here, we want to come back over into our layers dialog and right-click on our image layer or our text image layer, and we're going to choose Alpha to selection, and that is going to select everything within this layer that is not transparent and in this case that is all of our text okay now once you have this selected this entire layer here uh, that I have to entitled Unforgiven for we have typed our text out on this is no longer needed so I am going to come down here to the little trash can icon and delete that uh, that leaves us with just our background layer and our selection before we go any further into our filter here we need to come up here and to select and invert the selection that way instead of the letters being selected now everything else in the image on the background is selected except for the uh, the text 
excuse me, or where the text was. Uh, the reason for this is we want to apply a drop shadow. If you apply a drop shadow before you invert, it is going to give the uh, text a look as if it is 3D or coming up off of the background, and we, like I said, we're going to want to sync it in. Uh, so once you have inverted your selection, you can come up top to filters, and we're going to come down to light and shadow, and drop shadow. Our drop shadow box will come up here, and we are going to set our offset X, oops, excuse me, and our offset Y at 6, and I'm going to set my blur radius at 15. Uh, you want to make sure the color is black, well, it should be by default, and you want to turn your opacity all the way up. And just click OK. Give that just a moment to render and run. Okay, now we're going to repeat that process by coming back up top again and click, oh, excuse me, clicking on filters. And instead of having to go through that, the second uh, option down should now be reshow drop shadow. Not repeat, but reshow. We're going to click on that and that will bring up our drop shadow box once again. This time we are going to add in another drop shadow, but we want to give it a shadow on the other side of the letters, or somewhat on the other side, so it, it looks a little more like it's been put into the background. So we're going to change our offset X and our offset Y values to 0, and we are going to double our blur radius. So I'm going to change that to a 30. Background color, once again, is going to be black with their opacity all the way up to 100, and click OK. Give that just a moment to render. Alright, now you can come up top to select and select none. And if you zoom in just a bit, you can see that our text now appears as if it, is, as if it has been chiseled into or carved into the background. Uh, now from here, you can get rid of, the, we've got a little yellow line here going around our background, which is not the same size as our canvas, and we have a little extra transparent here as well. Those can be changed by right-clicking on our main background layer, layer to image size, and then we'll get rid of the transparent edge here by coming up to image, and scrolling down to auto crop image. And there you have it. There is your engraved background. And I think that covers just about everything. Uh, now as you're going through those steps, uh, you can kind of play around with the values a little bit, uh, depending on the background you're using. Uh, make it look a little better for you. Uh, and just have a little fun with it, but that is the basics on how to do this uh, and how to accomplish this effect. So, okay. So thank you for watching, and I hope this was informative. Please take a second to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week for another video.